already smashed myself. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Hi guys. It is a cool and cloudy night here in the end times in the hellhole of Hotlanta, GA. I cannot believe I'm back in Hotlanta, GA for the first time in 24 years here on Friday, April 23rd. 2021, but here is the reason I'm in the hot land of GA. Is, Hi uh, there. <laughs> she calls herself a doomer chick, but oh, uh, despite what you're getting ready to see, uh, <laughs> this woman really is a doomer chick, but we're going to yes. go to the bliss ninny side of the table. <laughs> that's, and, that's uh, good, yeah. I'm going to let Ariel come on and uh, <laughs> introduce herself. Because I could not do this woman justice, and then she is going to give me all sorts of readings. Yes. And I'm just going to let this run out. Anyone's welcome to uh, sit around until the camera runs out. Because apparently, I thought this would take 20 minutes, but apparently it's going to take longer than that. <laughs> but come on and say hello to the tribe and uh, dive right into giving me a reading awesome. so people know what they're getting into in this channel. All right, guys. Well, good to see everyone. My name is Ariel. I have a YouTube channel named Dragon Tail Tarot, D A R D. Is that how you spell dragon? Yeah. D R A G O N T A. L-E-T-A-R-O-T, -E and I have been a practicing astrologer and tarot reader for over 20 years in the Atlanta and Oregon area. Um, I've done many classes about astrology. I wrote for the Atlanta Aquarius magazine for 10 years, doing their moonology and horoscopes, and it's something I've uh, had a great lifelong passion for. Um, I've had a YouTube channel for about two years, and uh, it's been really great. It's been wonderful. I've met awesome people out there um, and it is it's just it's a lot of fun if it's not your thing that's totally cool but if it is you might really enjoy this session because I am going to be dissecting Mr. Sam yes. over here um, through his astrology charts and some tarot card readings so we're gonna we're gonna dig into him today and um, if you're interested in checking out more or seeing what I do you can feel free I'm sure he'll probably post a link to my channel on this and um, you might also have some of my folks <laughs> coming in to say hi to you as well. All right. We <laughs> but I've been, mix up the I, have, so. I have been watching Collapse Chronicles and Humpty Dumpty Tribe for almost 10 years off and on now. And um, I've always as well um, had a deep passion for the environment, um, animal welfare, etc. It's something I, I, we were talking earlier, I was radicalized at a very young age. So despite all of my hippy dippy savoir faire here, <laughs> I might actually, uh, you know, impress you later with my climate knowledge. Maybe we'll see about that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So when I work on a chart, and, you know, this is kind of like more like what you get in a personal reading, what I'm doing for him, um, is I start out with your natal chart, and that's what this is right here. And so you really do need all of your birth data, if possible, to do this. You need your time, your um, you know day, month, year of birth, the place that you were born, and as close to the accurate birth time. So he was born at 6, 17 a.m. So you got to get real specific. I was born at 8, 9 a.m. I was born in an early morning hour, despite not being a morning person. Funny how We're that both works. native Atlantans. That's different hospitals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born in uh, Northside Hospital, and he's here in Atlanta as well. So that's a really fascinating um, coincidence there. Um, so let's get into the basics of the natal chart first. All that is something. Right. Let and me have a swallow of this drink before. Oh, have, we... have you ever had your astrology chart done before? I should ask that first. Uh, about 15 or 20 years ago, but I didn't get the reading. He just gave me all just the stuff. Just gave you the chart. I gotcha. Like, what the hell is this? Gotcha. Okay. All right. All right. So let me get my this... head shrunk here. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Um, my teacher is actually an Atlanta area astrologer named Lynn Hammond Gray, and she was an amazing teacher. I, if people tell me I'm a good astrologer, I say I learned from one of the best because she was great. Um, so we're going to start out with the sun sign because that's always when, when, when somebody slides up next to you in the bar and says, hey, baby, what's your sign? They're talking about the sun sign, not your moon, not your anything else. The sun sign is really the conscious mind. It's the way you make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. And so... 
the way that it's really easy to start, if you, you know, were a student of astrology or just kind of want to get your feet wet with it, it's really a three-step system. I would say the planet is what is acting. You know, that's, that's the actor. The sign it's in is how it's acting. That's kind of the character or the role it takes on. And the house that it's in, these little sections in the wheel, that's the stage. That's where the action takes place. That's where it's acting out. So if you remember that, no matter how long you've been doing astrology, it starts to add up. It's like, okay, so the sun sign at 28 degrees of Virgo. So you are a cuspy Virgo. You're very close to the sign of Libra. And so that to me makes you a little bit Libran, even though you are it's September 22nd. Yeah, I'm as close to Libra as you can get. You're right on the edge. See, I'm the same. I'm a sun sign um, Capricorn, but I'm right on the edge of Aquarius. I was born January 19th. So we're both cuspy earth signs, which is pretty cool. Um, so this brings in a little bit of that Libra influence. And the biggest reason that you're going to feel that Libra influence is because your ruling planet, Mercury is the ruling planet of Virgo. And Mercury is a sign of talking, thinking, communicating. <laughs> it is, yeah. Ranting. I, I am going to say this one doesn't stop talking. Like, yeah, it's, uh... it's like if you're breathing, if you're awake, if you're coherent, you're talking. Um, you know, and a big reason for that is because you are ruled by Mercury, but it is also because the sun right here is conjunct Mercury. And a conjunction happens when two or more planets are 10 degrees or less apart from each other. That is like the wheels on the chariot. One doesn't go without the other. So in the sun sign, the basic consciousness is connected to the planet of communication. There you, you go. You got a talker. You got somebody that's always got something to say. And a big reason that you're very adamant passionate, aggressive, assertive, all that okay, stuff. Yeah. Like that's and, and why you put it all out there for people to see it is because this stuff is happening in your first house of Aries. Aries is the house of your identity. The motto for Aries is I am. So it's like, this is like, what am I about? What is it that people first see about me? What do they notice? And you Ranting. are, yeah, they do notice that. That is part of it. <laughs> and I would also tell you, your rising sign is in Virgo. And that's the sign that's on the Eastern horizon when you're born. So the sun being conjunct, the rising sign, that's a powerhouse. That's like, boom, like your personality is very immediate. People notice you very quickly. They and if they don't, you make sure they do. There you go. Like that is, it's true. Um, there's an interesting balance here as well, because the sign of Virgo and the sign of Libra, which are the two signs that respectively rule your first house, I would say are signs that are very accommodating. They always want to make other people happy. They always want to take into the balance and make sure that there's compromise and everybody basically gets what they want. They don't really want to piss people off. <laughs> I've never pissed off an ass licking toady they... or a mask Nazi. I, 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 I want, want ass licking toady mask Nazis to feel comfortable in my presence. But that being said, <laughs> yes. Sam, that being said, you have a balancing act here. There uh, is a part is. of you that doesn't want to piss people off, but there's a part of you that I is just, very just aggressive, very up in your face because the energy of Aries is very up in your face. Yeah. It does not accommodate to people. It's a very opposite. It's very self-centered. Well, that's the, that's, well, that's the <laughs> have a little tail versus Sam Mitchell, of course. We're, we're having right. Oh, you have, we haven't people. even got into the double personality well, yeah, yet. That's coming. Uh, we're, is, that's coming. Is this coming. a reading on him a little tail or Sam Mitchell? Both. Like <laughs> Both. Because there's definitely two in this chart. <laughs> I haven't even gotten there yet. We are just starting. started. Um, so this is why I would say that there are going to be times in your life and times in your energy where you know you can be you really want to make everybody happy you don't want to piss anybody off but then there's other times when it's all off the table and i'll tell you what will actually push your buttons what is that i'll tell you what push your buttons okay. number one you're a virgo so you're tweaky you got little issues and quirks virgos all do and it all is different between virgos there's not a really typical quirk but they got their quirks and so if something gets under their skin and they just don't like it or it just makes them you know fussy 
you'll never hear the end of it. They can be really OCD with that. They like can they take can, that mask shit just yes, way right. too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where that comes in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sir. The other thing that would really irritate you is lack of justice, fairness, and balance. If you see people getting hurt, if you see you know things not being fair, and that comes down to this Libra energy. And there are times, oh yes, you're Mars, you're Mars, and that is the planet that rules Aries. So this is your planet of, of you know, action, drive, it's your masculine energy, right? It's how you fight. Having it be in Libra, it can be, shall I say, a little passive aggressive at times. There you go. Very much. Like sometimes if somebody's on your bad side, you may not always just come out and let them have it. You may just snipe at them a little until they, you know, come at you like, stop sniping at me. And then it turns into, there you go. <laughs> yeah, this can be a big thing. And so I would say it's a really important thing with anyone. See, Mars in, uh, in Libra is not well expressed because Libra is a sign of peace and diplomacy. Mars is like, let's just fucking have it out. Okay. So this is where you come into that balance or that contradiction seemingly within yourself where sometimes you really want to play the peacemaker and other times you just want to burn it to the ground. There you go. It, it's, a, it's a really big part of the personality. So it's important for you to find um, healthy ways to get aggression out, you know, to get your feelings out before it builds to um, a really catastrophic event or cataclysmic emotional meltdown because, you know, you're the kind of person that, especially in a personal relationship, you'll just stuff it. You'll put up with it. You'll put up with it till you just can't put up with it. And, and they may, all over. and they may be like, I didn't know you were this upset. And you'd been like holding it in for years. And you're like, Oh, but I can't take it anymore. And, blah, and it all comes out. And they're like, what is this? <laughs> to you make it's perfect sense. They should have noticed anyway. Yes, they should have figured it out. <laughs> they should have noticed. Uh, there are little signs along the way. <laughs> like this. I've I've got my Scorpio cup full of a very lightweight margarita because yes. I'm not really a drinker, so I said, please make me a light one. It's very nice refreshing, though. But I like it that it's a Scorpio cup. <laughs> She's not a Scorpio. Mm -mm. She just has the cup. I'm a Capricorn. All right. All right, so next up, we're going to get into the two sides of your personality, oh, honey. Oh, boy, the Sam Mitchell versus the Hamlet Little Town. I'll show you right where it is. It's your moon sign in Gemini. There you go. It's the twins. It's the double side. Gemini moon. And in a lot of, you know, in a lot of different methods of astrology, the moon sign is almost more important than anything else. And the reason is because the sun is your very conscious drives. It's the things that you are more aware of and other people are more aware of. The moon sign is the subconscious. It's the thing that drives you from within. It's like, these are the things that you need to feel really good. My old teacher, Lynn, said, if you want to be happy, you've got to do the needs of the moon sign very actively to get what makes you feel So what are the satisfied. needs of my moon sign? The needs of a Gemini moon. The needs of a Gemini moon Needs to sign. talk. Blah, needs blah, blah, blah. to think. Needs to share. Needs to communicate. Needs to connect. Needs to dig up information about every little thing that they come across. Um, needs variety. Needs, oh, versatility. Needs to try all kinds of things because Gemini's motto is I experience. Once they've tried it, I tried it. All right, time to do something else. They are the social butterfly. They love to meet new people. They love to take short trips. Gemini rule short trips. So they, this is why you said, you're like, I'm always driving. I'm always going somewhere. And this is the needs of the moon. That's, it's because yeah. it drives you from within it. But here's the other thing. The Gemini is the twins. It's the dual personality. And I would say that I cannot tell you how many times I've seen somebody with a Gemini moon where they don't get diagnosed with bipolar. ADD, all those things, because people are like, they're split personality. I'm like, no, they're just a Gemini moon. They're... Damn, and I thought I was bipolar all these years. It's, no. It might just be your astrology. Just, it, be my Gemini moon. <laughs> it might could be part of the astrology. Damn. And so this is why you have this thing where you do these two characters right. and they both feel real to you and they both feel valid because you literally do have two sides of yourself within gemini is a dualistic sign so is virgo virgo is a dual sign as well so you do have a duality about you and it's not wrong it's just different <laughs> you know and i would also but say it's only two like yeah, some people i yeah, know, yeah, know yeah, yeah. we won't mention any names i've <laughs> counted at least six 
So the other thing that I would say about, you know, a Gemini moon is that it can be a little fickle. It can be hard for you because once you pick one thing, the grass might look greener on the other yes, side and you're going, yes, oh, yes. so it leads to, it can lead to a little bit of that kind of divine discontent because when you pick, being a snowbird, yeah, 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 yeah. You're, being a you're snowbird sharing your, right um, yeah, sharing your time between two different living spaces uh, because the moon is the home. The moon is the home too, right? It's cancer energy. It's home, family. And so you also might feel like you have two distinct families. You have your biological family and then you have your chosen family. Your tribe. Your friends. Yeah, your tribe. And the little and, dog. And the little dog is definitely, oh, and he is a really good little dog. <laughs> it's just like. Talk about the little dog when we get to all the, the uh, deck. All the, um, all, the, all the rumors about Sancho being awesome are absolutely true. Um. So that's where a lot of this comes from. And the other thing that I would say about your moon sign, I don't know how many people can really see this, but <laughs> the moon is in the ninth house of Sagittarius. Ah, and Sagittarius is it. a house of travel as well. It's a sign of education. And so this moon sign, this Gemini energy, is moving in a house of great big travel. Because Gemini is short trips, Sagittarius is the opposite, and it's the long international trips, right? So... Gemini rules the shorter excursions round about town, maybe in, you know in the within the country, etc. Sagittarius is those big it's off journeys, to Peru for, right? Yeah. That's it. That's international yeah. travel. The other thing that happens in that area is you love to learn, have an insatiable curiosity. Um, this is the eternal student, eternal student, and also could be an eternal teacher. It really does um, involve both of those energies, teacher and student as well. And I'd also say that the ninth house is a super spiritual, philosophical. Yes. You're always looking for the ultimate truth. And as a result, you may often feel lonely. We're so fucked. <laughs> I found the ultimate truth. That's so it. Yeah. I mean, I, see, but that's the thing. And that's the Sag... I found the ultimate truth. We that's, are so fucked. That's, that's why the I'm Sag so lonely. That's the Sagittarius <laughs> so energy. you figure out how fucked Sagittarius we are, you really does not, lonely. <laughs> Sagittarius does not sugarcoat uh, anything for anyone. And, uh, and a lot of people just can't take it. No. They just can't handle it. No. It's a, it's a very no-holds-barred... Yes. I mean, let's think about so, famous Sagittarians, Mark Twain, oh, okay. um, Winston Churchill, Jane Austen, okay? We're just talking about people that just, you know, very good with the witty comeback. This is why you have a way with words. This is why when I listen to you stu your stuff, even if it's full of doom and gloom, I still end up laughing like crazy because it's very witty, right? There's this real, like, wicked left hook with the, with the words. It's like, boom, you're... You're the person that always comes up with the good comeback. You're not the person that later goes, God, I wish I thought to say no, that. I, no, you I, usually think to, to, you usually that, think yeah, to say it. I, I, I hate to finish a damn rant. And go, God damn it. I forgot to say this and that. Yeah, that's why you should script them. Yeah, I don't script either. I never do. This is not scripted. This is completely no, I just, off the cuff. I just guys. turn on the camera and go. Yes. That's what I do with my yes, channel. She is winging this. So, um, well, not really. No. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. Well, this is a know, new uh, chart. But I've we seen haven't, many. We haven't done this. Uh, Before. Okay. No. Yes, this or is, have we? This is a first. Uh, <laughs> or have we? Okay, so. Getting into a little bit more, we know we're all, we, the two biggest things people ask about in reading, not surprisingly, are going to be love and money. It always yes. is. So let's love get into, let's get into love, my yes. darling, because. I see a big blank house that you're this tapping one, on. Yeah. This one big is. Big blank space. <laughs> <laughs> right next to that blank space hey, of money. Hey, let's look at this because, yeah. you know, I, I have heard so much on your channel about pile of fish and yes. the people and the stuff, you know, Ugh. so Venus, Venus is a big one. This is, your, this is your big love planet. It's also the way you socialize. It's the kind of way you enjoy socializing. Your Venus sign is really important in your chart. Number one, it is at the highest degree, okay? Planets can only go from zero, zero to 29, and then they switch up to the next sign. Oh, that would make sense. So, if you look at all of these degrees, the highest degree is 29, and it's Venus. So Venus is actually the emperor of your chart. So let me tell you, friendships, relationships, social interaction, it's number one. It's your number one priority. 
even though you have all these other things you're passionate about, this is a hard one to get over. It's really tough to get over <laughs> because it's a big deal to you. It's not like, oh, that's not such a big deal. And if it comes, it's no big deal. It's a big deal to you. Part of it, too, is because you have this Mercury and Mars in Libra, and Libra is a partnership sign. So a lot of your thoughts and a lot of your energy are directed towards partnerships, friendships. You're not really a person that necessarily loves going out by yourself. You will if you got to, but you'd much rather have a friend or someone with you. It's just, it feels better. Four is more fun. The other thing I would say about you is nobody wants to get into an argument with you. <laughs> Nobody. Because a Mercury and Libra person is like being in the room with a lawyer. Even if they've never gone to, you know, even if they've never studied law, they don't know nothing about it. It's like being in a, in a, in a courtroom. Because a, a Libra Mercury person will lay out all of the evidence. They'll say, here's why I'm right. You cannot argue I with me. I've looked at laying out I, the evidence for I, 12 I, I have How weighed both I have weighed both sides I, of every situation. You can't tell me otherwise. So You cannot tell me we're not <laughs> fucked. And if you think we're not fucked, obviously you have not done your homework. You haven't been paying attention. You have not been paying attention. If you're not I, you know, if you're not outraged, you aren't paying attention. That's true, you know. If you don't believe it, you haven't been paying attention. That's how I feel. So Venus, 29 degrees, and it is in the sign of Leo. And it is red. So this means it's like it hopeless. Is, it is in Leo. Find the, um, the check. What's really funny about this is that Leo is a sign that's very loving, very warm, very generous with its time, especially when it's Where did hard. Leo come from? Especially when its heart is activated. Your Venus sign is in Leo. Oh, my Venus sign yeah. is in Leo. Yes. Oh, boy. This is also maybe why you married the Leo. Uh, uh, I'm I'm not not why. Don't think that was the reason, but... Uh, well, uh, you know, it didn't hurt mm -hmm. because it would make you connect with somebody that had that energy, whether you were cognizantly <laughs> aware of it or not. There you go. Um, the other so kind... Why, why did I divorce the uh, Leo? <laughs> because, baby, you got an intense love life. You've got some very, very <laughs> definite life and death cycles in your relationships. Uh, They're very intense. And let me tell you, this the reason for this, you've you're got scaring off the Duber chicks. You've, the, no, no. You've got <clears throat> Venus conjunct Pluto. Pluto is the ruler of our old Scorpio friends here. Well, you and they are about death, destruction, rebirth, and regeneration. Are you listening, ladies. So let me tell death, you when, when, this is Scorpio out. energy. So when you're Scorpio, really Scorpio, I thought it was Leo. It is. And Scorpio. I'll break it down for you. Again. You break it down. I'll break it down. So here's your planets, Venus and Pluto. Right. Venus is at 29 degrees of Leo. So that's your Venus. Pluto, however, is at 4 degrees of Virgo. Because they are less than 10 degrees apart, they are conjunct. Oh. So they travel together. When you have the Scorpio ruler affecting your Venus in a conjunction like that, that means they're joined. They, one Is that go, what that means? So one can't go without the what other. That means. One can't go without the other. So uh. your love style is a little funky doodle because <laughs> you can be very open and very warm and very generous, but you can also be very secretive. You can be very intense, and you don't always want people knowing all your business all the time. You might have a few cards that you just say, I'm never going to show those can to you. Can y'all imagine the cards I'm holding, considering the ones I've laid on the table? Yeah. I'm not even going to get into those. <laughs> so this is, a, okay, I will tell you for two different things about this. All right. When you're super, super in love with someone, it's an obsession almost. It is really hard for you to stop thinking about them. Almost. You almost want to feel like I want to possess them. Like that's the Scorpio energy. Like I don't want them going anywhere. I want to make sure they're mine forever. Like that's your thing. It's the other thing that can happen too. And that's for good or bad. Because Scorpio is very intense. It can be really, really good. It can be really, really bad. Sometimes you might say, why would I love somebody that's so bad for me? <laughs> right? That's what can uh, happen there sometimes. And it defies your logic, which you have a lot of. And you don't like it when yes. it defies your logic. Mm -hmm. You don't like that. Yeah. So the other thing that I would say about this, too, is that it can attract a lot of really intense people into your life that are obsessive about you. 
if you had the crazy people that call you again and again uh, in the middle of the night and it, uh, chase you down and you know I feel like you got to join witness got to join join band uh, join witness 18 witness I, I, protection to get rid of them right yeah, I, I, I have 18 psycho bitches banned I mean from ever calling me emailing me not counting the ones I've just banned from my channels I'm, I'm talking you know personal mm -hmm. life banning mm -hmm. yeah 18 wow yeah for someone trying so hard to find a woman, and right. I've banned eighteen well, of them out of my life. This is this is <laughs> this is your catch twenty two. Yes, you, it is. You want to have somebody in your life, but you're but, picky because one uh, of the key words for Virgo is picky, discriminating, particular. They yes. are not one size fits all. Does not apply to you. Yep. When but when you know it, you know it. Okay, are you listening, darling? <laughs> Out there. <Yes. laughs> So in your 12th house, the 12th house is one of the hardest houses of the chart. Um, is this money we're talking about or no, still love? No, this is still love. Wow. And I can absolutely raise my hand because I was born with my sun, moon, and Mars all in my 12th house. So I know it's difficult. So you know what it feels like. I absolutely do because it has okay. affected my everyday <laughs> on this earth. These are the things that can truly lead you to some dark places. <laughs> yes dark places yeah. suicidal depression feeling like it's the end of the world well it is the end of the world it is the end of the world but you know what i'm saying <laughs> but that I, I know what that, you're that, saying. that figure of speech that sometimes <laughs> you feel like eeyore with the gloom is the cloud is raining over you all the time and it's this but i will tell you this is it is it's actually when i see this i think about um funny enough this is going to throw you for a loop but i think about tina turner's astrology chart all right. she was born with pluto in her 12th house and this Tina, is a Tina, Tina. I know this, how you feel, girl. This is a Pisces house, and it can be a house of suffering and transcendence. And you have to work through a lot of junk. A lot of psychological crap has to be worked out with this kind of a placement. You have a great ability to heal spiritually, but it takes work, and you can't put it off, or it just kind of clobbers you. And it can be really intense. And you can see it in, like, her life. You know, it's like she, ooh, she came from really rough stuff. But, you know, in her older years now, I mean, she was just like, everything's cool. She's living in Europe. She's like, I don't care. Everything's chill. Um, but this is, a, this is a position of transcendence. And so I would say that if you have those very dark moods, which I understand because I got a lot of energy in that house myself, you have to have coping mechanisms. You really do, because when you get into a dark rat hole, it can be so hard <laughs> to pull yourself back out of it. It can. Um, you get the little rat hole, dog. Oh, it, the puppy can help. He it's can help anything. Is there a rat? That dog can help. You need to get help. that rat or not. I know. You need to get that rat. There's a rat. <laughs> He's like, where, where, where? Oh, he thought I'm saying rabbit. No, he's not saying rabbit. I'm All saying right. rat, not rabbit. So those are the things I would seriously point out around that. And I would also say that it is, it is a challenge to find somebody that can go through those huge transformational cycles of your life because you will have them in relationships. And so ultimately the best kind of relationship for you is somebody that can go through those big transformations, those life and death cycles. And, and, he, and move heal, back yeah. and forth and from heal, New York and to Florida, he, yeah. and heal through it. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, too. They do need to be able to embrace that dichotomy and and and, and chill with it. And you know, hey, if if you if you find a good prospect, refer him back to me, and I'll be like, here's what you got, honey. Right. <laughs> Couple other things I'm gonna point out in your basic stuff. Um, so yeah, when we talked about money, your your money house is your second house most of the time. That's a house of tangible materials. It's the Taurus house. Um, it's your resources. It's the so way you get them. So that's the one that has nothing in it. That's the that, that's the uh, blank it's, house. it's an interesting one it's because a shrinking house, it right? has Neptune there. Uh -oh. It has Neptune there, and I can say that this is the kind of person you may experience huge windfalls of money, huge losses of money. Um, yes. The more that you get attached, though. To the oh. idea of having a bunch of stuff, the more it gets taken away from you very inexplicably. And getting your silver stall on the day before you close on your house. Yes, I... <laughs> That's Neptune. Yeah. Damn Neptune, man. It has a way of taking things away that aren't good for you. Uh, it does. Okay. Well, that's okay. Like, that part is... Yeah. <laughs> 
The other thing that I would say about this, having Neptune in your second house, interestingly, I just did a reading about a week ago for a gal that had this same placement, Neptune in the second, and I said, I know this is going to sound risky, but one of the best ways that you make money is by doing something unusual or creative. Uh. Yeah. That's the best <laughs> way that you actually get ahead is by kind of letting go of the idea of making a ton and just I do what you enjoy. Let go of the, the do idea what you enjoy. Of making a ton do of something money when weird or creative it. or something yeah. that's interesting. The other thing that I'm going to bring into this is, and the other thing too with Neptune and that house, this is also a house of your personal values and what really matters to you. And at the end of the day, what really actually matters to you is spiritual truth. Um, genuine authentic authentic people yeah that's what really actually matters to you it's not all the stuff it's not all the things at the end of the day you have a very spiritual attitude but it's like you can't take it with you so why you know get so worried about holding on to it all but the search for genuine authentic people is oh it's not easy <laughs> i know that come, on, come, on come here so into um, this part of your chart. I love this All right, right here. where are we jumping to? This is the part of fortune up here. The part of fortune is a mathematical combination of your sun, your moon, and your rising sign. And it gives you a fixed point on your chart that really shows you kind of how, again, how you make your fortune, how you make your way in your life. And it's in Taurus. Taurus is all about grounding and earthy stability. And so the, carrying tomato plants see, around in your camper. When I see you out there in, in nature, in the ground, and moving the plants and, and digging stuff up, I'm like, bushes out by that's the root kind ball. of your thing. That's yes. part of your thing. And staying very connected to the earth is important. I could also say that making things is important because Taurus likes to make things. Um, and guess what Taurus also rules? The throat. Taurus likes to talk. Yes. So you're good at the talking. Have we mentioned this? <laughs> But a lot of times you will double up that energy. So what makes you such a radical? Let's see how that what works. Makes out. What makes me such a radical? What, I know what makes me one. I got Aquarius on my rising. I'm like, Rrr. um, but you've got the ruler of Aquarius in the eleventh house of Aquarius. Whoa! Very nice placement because Very it good. works well within its own realm. This is the radical, the freedom, the truth teller. Um, the authentic self, the authentic seeker. There's not a lot of games here. Yes, you may you may keep some things to yourself in, in you know certain situations, but on the whole, you're very open. You're very open, and you are somebody that goes against the grain, kind of the black sheep, always yeah. the one that's different, the one that's saying, you know, a hundred people are agreeing that this is the way it is, and you're like, but I see the emperor really has no clothes. This is the radical placement of the zodiac. And it also means that you are a bit of ahead of your time. You're going to get called crazy a lot for having your ideas. You're going to be, people say, that's ridiculous. But then in the future, they will go, oh, crap, this guy. Corona panic is a bad hair day. <laughs> this, they're going to say, oh, crap, this guy was right. Yes, have my little tail will be vindicated. Because, well, Aquarius is a very strong sign of the future. Yeah, and they usually have a beat on what's coming next before everyone it's, else does. It's just the way it is. It's called being a doomsday prophet. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, it is. And it's it's also because you're willing to march to the beat of your own drum. Uh, that's, I mean, that's what that is all about. So, you know, down here we get into, you know, you've got Jupiter and Scorpio. You've got Saturn and Capricorn. And I love that you've got Saturn and Capricorn. And it actually gives a lot of support to your Venus sign and your yeah. Neptune. You see these little lines drawn in the middle. That's the Aspectarian. And so that's just showing the relationships between planets and what kind of relationship they have, whether it's more free-flowing and easygoing and supportive or more challenging. I'm and on the, the challenging end. Yeah, the squares are more challenging. Yes, the trines are more free-flowing. Yes. Um, you know, so I've got nine squares in my chart, so don't get too down. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You got eleven. My dad had fifteen. <laughs> eleven squares. It's also a reason why you are active, because squares light fire under your butt. They, you know, you can't sit still for too long. Mm -hmm. Because you will get restless. You're like, I got to get out there and do something. Now, the fourth house is the house of the home and family. And it often shows either something about your family and home or the way you came in. And so when Saturn is right there on what we call like that soul line, that that's not easy. 
that's not easy. There's a lot of challenge. In some Saturn ways, on the soul line. In some ways, you could say family was very solid, but in some ways, you could also say family might have been a little hard, a little rigid, a little stern. Um, a lot of things that you had to live up to or felt like you had to live up to. Um, Saturn is often, as well, in the placement of Capricorn. It can be, um, you know, loss of father figure or, or a challenge well, around yes, father, father figure. My father died when I was nine months old. Oh. Thank God. Ooh. Oh, you didn't know that. I know you were that young. Nine months old, that Darn. motherfucker. Man. Wow. So that would be that. That would be part <laughs> that of That would be loss of father figure. Yeah, that, that would be that um, for sure. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, and it could also have made you feel like you had to be, uh, you had to grow up quick. You had to mature fast within the family unit. It's like people were expected to kind of pull their weight. You had to, you, you had to, you had to grow up. You had to grow up, you know. Still waiting. Still waiting. The other thing that you can say about that too is you're the kind of person that puts a lot of value into the home environment. And consequently you may be challenged a lot with finding it. You know, what feels like a good, solid, true home to you. That feels like something. This is also why the, the real time. estate thing makes a sense. With this. Real estate placement. Shack. Yeah, the real estate placement uh, thing in your life makes sense with this placement. Yeah, because to me, that's, that's business and home mixed together. Yeah, it's interesting. My, even my mom says, she's like, he doesn't seem like a realtor. I'm like, well, <laughs> it's in there. So. Why do you like to talk about doom and gloom? Okay, we've already we've already we've, we've already figured that you love to talk, you love to share, you're very open, you're very to the point when you talk. It's a big motivator. But why is it so ooh. <laughs> We've got Jupiter in the sign of Scorpio. Baby. That's why I'm a doomer. I always joke that Capricorn and Scorpio are doom and gloom. There you Scorpio go. is the doom and Capricorn's the, the gloom, gloom because Scorpio says, I'm going to destroy everything, and Capricorn says, and y'all deserved it. <laughs> that's, that's my joke about it, and I can say this because I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> um, so in the house of communication, right, this is the third house, Gemini. This is the house of communication. So you like to communicate in big, broad, colorful terms and strokes. And you like to do it very intensely. You like don't. You're not afraid of the dark side, dark side. at all, <laughs> at all. <laughs> Bring on the dark. And if you are provocative, oh well, oh well. You're you're very. I mean that Scorpio oh, energy well. is very cut and dry. If you don't like it, there's the oh, door. That's God. how you feel. Yeah. This so, is not a popularity contest. No. Nobody tried, right? Oh, no. Said many times, <laughs> this is not a warm and fuzzy corner of the Doomosphere. <laughs> Sancho is pretty warm and fuzzy. Yeah, he's uh, about the only warm and fuzzy thing <laughs> down here is Sancho Panza. The, um, so the North Node and the South Node show where you are coming from. If you, if you give any credence at all to the idea of reincarnation, it's certainly oh, those God, I've been in past lives, terror of past that life energies, and your current life energies. Fascinating thing, you and I both share the same north and south node signs. We oh, both come boy. from a similar past life situation or situations. I'm sharing nodes with this woman. I've only known her a day and we're Whoa. already sharing nodes. Good Lord. Hey, Where's this, gonna go this was here? there before, way before I met you. This is, we were uh, sharing notes before we ever knew each other. All right. <laughs> I love it when I find somebody that has the same as me because I'm I like. I love cause, to uh, share notes. Because I love, I love to. <laughs> I always like to tell them because I know what it feels like. I, I know what those I mean. know what this experience is yeah, like. Yeah, sharing so, those nodes. So coming yeah. from a south node in Aries. Yes. I know this this is this is what's going to go. This is south what might, node this in is what Aries. might lose me some yeah. subs, right? So the south node in Aries. This is literally you came from lifetimes of being a fighter, a warrior, military person, oh, somebody boy. that chopped the heads off. No joke. Oh, like you, you were tough. And so as a result, you didn't get to experience a lot of satisfying personal relationships because most of the time you either died quite young or you didn't have the roots to put down that kind of stability. It also leads to a feeling that, you know, current life 
you're like, why do I even have to try to get along with this person? Can I just chop their head off? That was so much easier back in the old days. If somebody gave you a hard time, you could just get rid of them. Uh, but for, that's not the way. the first 61 years of my life. It's but... not the... <laughs> How many heads well, do you have? Yeah. Rolling around in septic tanks. What's your collection? You've got a collection of heads from, from Oregon to Florida. <laughs> got heads buried down in the septic. <laughs> wow, I'm finding a lot of things out today. Yeah. <laughs> so, current life. So, the the North Node is where your life is getting pushed. The way that you can look at this symbology is this is like the cup that's already been filled, and this is the one that's empty, right? And you're over the course of your lifetime, you're being slowly but surely pushed into this more Libra lifetime, which is more diplomatic. It's more about your personal relationships. It's more about harmony and balance and getting along, finding your personal equilibrium. And it can be a challenge. It can be a challenge. It can be a challenge. The funny thing is that if like two friends come to you or someone needs advice, you're actually quite good at it. Like you actually a really good listener. You have a natural gift for counseling or, or hearing somebody out. Um, and that's part of the gift, right? That's part, it's like, well, we'll give you a little, we'll give you a little something to work with because we don't want you to be out here trying to figure this out on your own. Um, but you definitely come from lifetimes where, yeah, you, you were really aggressive and it paid off, right? It paid off to be tough and many times stoic and not to be too rattled by stuff like that and to not worry too much about how you handled things. Um, you know, but this time it's a lot more fancy footwork. So you're going from warrior lifetimes to balanced counseling relationship lifetimes. And that's another reason why you have a really deep need to find what you feel is a life partner, soulmate kind of person, because it feels like this is fulfilling something really important on this life's journey. That's why, right. you know. But you really, it's interesting where these are placed too, because that Libra energy is in your first house of yourself, right? And the Aries energy is placed in the seventh house of the other. <sighs> so it re- been... it's a very strong lifetime of, of, you know, learning who you are. It's like that know thyself mantra comes into it big time. The more you know yourself, the better you will be able to know others and vice versa. It's, it's just really an important thing to getting what you want. There you go. Um, and the way that you manifest definitely is. It's through talking, thinking, sharing. Your midheaven is in Gemini as well. You know, that's how you take the goals and the hopes and the dreams and put them into tangible place. Yeah. The tangible hopes. form. Yeah. It's Gemini. You got to talk about it. You got to share it. Um, we got a lot in here. I mean, this is just, this. Yeah, could, that's Lord, why, why these, that's why around? these can go for hours. This is your same chart that we just looked at. And the transit is the planets in real time, right? So that's where the planets are actually moving right now because your natal chart is basically a snapshot of the sky when you're born, where you're born, when you're born. And so, of course, the planets move. They're not static. So, you know, I mean, you, you're, you're snapshot, boom, and it keeps on going and it keeps on going. And this can really help you to understand why certain years are good or bad, certain times are good or bad, why it seemed like, oh, I had this 12-year cycle of just insanity or it was really good for a long time and then it went to hell. You know, it can really explain a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, interestingly enough, as we're doing your reading, we've got all this Taurus energy right now. We've got the Sun, um, Venus, Uranus, uh, Mercury is all in the sign of Taurus and it's all hitting your personal eighth house. It's transiting through that house. So it's really activating your Scorpio house right now. So when that happens, funny enough, we're sitting here digging into your uh your uh, psychological emotional depths <laughs> here we are let's just tear it on in let's dig um, away girl now here's an interesting <clears throat> thing for you um pluto went into the sign of capricorn in 2007 so that is actually when it would have been sitting on top of saturn in your fourth house and i would say the last 14 years They've been special. Uh, it was 2007. I met Terrence McKenna. And then, Whoa. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's never been the same since. Mm. That was where this all began. I think you're coming. Watched my first YouTube video. Wow. In 2007. Oh my gosh. So that really is like a specific date for you. Okay. So the fourth house, like I said, this is your home. It's your roots. It's many times the family and how you grew up, what you believe deep down about yourself. It's all that stuff. 
That would have shaken your world because Pluto is very transformative. It's slow but steady power that grows over time. And so it went through this whole fourth house during this time. And in the next year, it's going to shift out of that house. 15 years has been there by that time. That's a long cycle. Yes. So and so mean... I would say that right now, as it's getting ready to leave that fourth house of the home, mm-hmm. you're experiencing some big closures, some big, something coming full circle when it comes to that home area of your life. Like, you're really kind of saying, here's what I want, here's what I don't want, I'm going to close the door on some things and open the door on others. Um, I would also say that because this, your personal um, life number is number one, but your current life number year is nine this year. And nines are about closures, they are about completions, they are about cycles ending. Next year will be a one year both in your fixed life and in your current path. So not, next year is going to be a lot of new beginnings, a lot of new things coming up. And I would say that a lot of that comes as a result of you closing certain things out this year. You'll feel it. Yeah. Um, you were born in the year of the earth pig or boar in the Chinese lunar year. There you go, and, the earth pig. And your hour is the rabbit. All right. Those are actually very complimentary because... In Western astrology, the pig is associated with Scorpio, and the rabbit is associated with Pisces. They're both water signs. So you do have you do have an interesting deep emotionality. You do. And I would say that I have seen that on your channel, watching all of the ups and downs. And it's like sometimes it can get real intense in there, and I'm like, oh man, he's going through a thing. And then other times it's like real easy going, right? It's like, it's, it's, it can be intense. Um, but here's the cool thing about the um, lunar year of the pig. These are the last uh, lunar branch. It's the 12th sign in the uh, Chinese zodiac. And they are considered to be, you know, really ascended in a lot of ways, very humanitarian, very down to earth. They're really solid, good people. They're like the Charlie Brown of the, of the Zodiac. Space, yes. They might seem kind of rough or surly on the exterior, but if you scratch them, let me see what happens. They're pure gold under there. <laughs> That's the story about the, the pig year. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, I've taught classes about Chinese astrology, and I, I, I definitely taught a pig year class a couple times, and it was very interesting. But they are, they can be kind of intense. And this is, you know, the greedy is a pig thing. They can be a little hedonistic. It's a little all or nothing. Absolutely. But they are definitely considered to be one of the, one of the best signs. And lucky. Very lucky. The pig, oh, yes. the pig can be quite lucky. Wow. Um, inexplicably. <laughs> inexplicably. Uh. They, 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 they are the kind of people that even if they seem down to their last penny, they have a way of the 11th getting hour. through it. Yeah, they have a way of getting through it. It's, yeah. I would also say that being born with a rabbit ascendant, it gives you, sorry, margarita. <laughs> um, it gives you this sort of a little bit of cleverness. Rabbit people have a cunning quality about them. They know how to get what they want by just being adaptable and versatile. Um, if they want to get somebody to sign a contract, they'll give them a nice dinner. They'll mm, get him a little real buzzed, estate career. A little, we we'll get him a little buzzed, and then yeah. just, just, just sign on the dotted just, line. Yeah. God damn it! I want that commission <laughs> and then, check. And yeah. Then they just push Have that, another margarita. They just, they just push that contract, and he barely even felt it. It was like, oh, you know, what did I just do? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Getting those signatures mm-hmm. on the contract. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus, how many times have I been through that hell? So. You know, we I could I could dig into this all day long. You know, I really could. It's it's always a lot. It's always a lot. You're she's getting thorough. I thought you, this was gonna take like twenty minutes. You know, no, but maybe I mean, she's I, like, I, you, I can do minutes, I you know? can do a quick reading, but usually she's like, I could do Joe Biden in twenty seconds. But your ass, <laughs> your dragon what, is attacking that's you. What happens when you start talking to a dragon? Yes. <laughs> I was born in a chi- in the Chinese year and hour of the dragon. That's why my uh, my channel is named Dragon Tail Tarot because I am a Capricorn dragon. You see, the dragon's got the wings and the tail. I just fly away from that. 
<laughs> but I do love Sir Snaps a lot. That's my plush gator over there. <laughs> He's my buddy. <laughs> I bought him to go eat Cajun food with. That's, that's what I brought him. So you do have some big things shifting. You're getting ready to have Pluto leave a house, Hello, Jupiter leave a house, Hello. Neptune leaving a house. And Everyone's leaving another. the house. Yeah, but it there, means they're starting a new cycle. And so Hello. this... This further contributes to my feeling that you are you're closing a lot of doors and opening some new ones. That's really what it feels like. And so what I'm really excited about in your progressions, and I know this is getting into deeper astrology, this is still you in the middle. This is your progression and your solar arc out here. So your solar progression, it's, they last a day for a year. And that means however much a planet normally moves in a day, it moves that much for a year in the progressed chart. Um, and I know how that all technically works, but I'm not going to explain it right now because it's just, you know, I, I want to keep, keep it going. So what you are doing right now, this excited me so much when I looked at it. When I pulled this chart, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, this is exciting. Dun, dun, dun. I said, um, you just finished a 30 year progressed solar cycle in Scorpio. All right! Woo! I have no fucking idea what that means. <laughs> well, I'll be excited for you. So what that means is that it took the last 30 years, your, your 30 years. progressed... That's my life. Your progressed energy has... Because you were born right on the edge. So when you were like less than two years old, yeah. you progressed to Libra. And so the, for the first 30 years of your life... You were progressed Libra. You were chasing the girls, and they were chasing him, and you know all of that. That's why the girls stopped chasing me. <laughs> well, then it moved into Scorpio, and so the last three years, Scorpio is a much more intense, more introverted, um, very passionate kind of. Woo, you know, it's, it's a heavy sign. We've talked about him. Um, so now that this see the zeros here see those zeros all those zeros that's supposed to be the, the sun when has, the girl stopped chasing the me the sun has just moved from scorpio to sag after a 30 year cycle honey and so at the same time last year about a year and a half ago you completed your second saturn return that happens every 30 years as well right. so you see this pattern i'm seeing this pattern emerging again and again in these charts where it's like one cycle is closing and another cycle is opening. I feel like this is already in progress. You're already going through it. I think that as this year